you're probably wondering why you're eating these rocks, right? I know, I know. You can't help but do it. Don't worry. That's perfectly normal. And it actually is genius. I'm here as your professor to explain all the ridiculous calculations your brain's doing without telling you. You see, millions of years ago, crocodiles figured out how to use math and physics for hunting. They did it so well that evolution basically stopped making updates and has been copy-pasting the same design ever since. Yes, really. The crocodiles we have today look strikingly similar to many fossils from the last few million years, and this trick of eating rocks was one of those clever strategies your ancestors discovered, making them exceptional hunters. But you? Well, given that you have a prehistoric brain, you found yourself doing it without even realizing the true reason behind it. Do you remember when you were small and dumb? Or rather, smaller and equally dumb? You ate tiny pebbles to help crush up insects and digest better, because your actual teeth were too pathetic to finish the job. You essentially added extra teeth for your stomach. But as you grew up, you got bigger and bigger. Those rocks stopped being about digestion and became about something else that you do instinctively without understanding why. Eating bigger rocks the size of a fist. Some of you are carrying around over 10 kilos of stones in your gut. But as I said, it's not about digestion like it used to be. You could swallow a whole gazelle and those rocks wouldn't help. Sit down and let me explain. When you fill your lungs with air, they act like built-in water wings. Every liter of your body pushes aside a liter of water. If you weigh the same as the water you push aside, you flow, like a divorced dad in a swimming pool. That's physics 101. Without something to weigh you down, you'd never sink. Each kilogram of rock is 2.7 times denser than water, and without rocks, you'd last maybe 6 minutes underwater before popping up like toast. But with rocks, your average dive time nearly doubles to 11 minutes. The champions among you stretch it out to 35 minutes. Your brain just screams, eat the rock, and you do it, because that's what evolution figured out 200 million years ago. This is why you're stuck with the urge without the explanation. This rock trick is so old that your extinct marine reptile cousins, the plesiosaurs, were already doing it 150 million years ago. We know this because scientists continue to find fossils with stomachs full of stones. But it's not only about crocodiles. You see, many other animals do this even today. For example, ostriches. For the same reason as baby crocodiles, to help with their digestion. Now you're probably wondering, wait, if I keep eating rocks, how do these things come out? Well, here's where it gets disgusting. You don't poop them out hours later like any normal animal would do. No, no, no. These rocks don't take the express route. These rocks sit in your stomach for a while. Weeks, months, sometimes even years. Over time, they get rounded and smoothed as they rub against each other and the food in your stomach. Only after that, they start taking a luxury cruise through your intestines and eventually get pooped out. Oh, and if you're stressed for whatever reason, you just vomit them. Because why not? You're impressed, I know, but that's just the beginning. Wait until you discover more about yourself. Speaking of which, let's see what happens after you compulsively swallow those rocks. As we've seen, they make you heavy enough to cancel out your lungs filled with air, which means you neither sink or float. Thanks to that, you're able to hold a perfect periscope position, allowing you to literally cheat geometry. Thanks to the rocks, your whole body stays hidden underwater except for two small bumps, your eyes and nostrils that barely break the surface. They form a small triangle, creating a minimal geometry needed to breathe and watch. You know that thing where a stick looks broken when it's half in water? That's because light bends as it passes between air and water, or what we call refraction in physics. What matters is that this phenomenon creates Snell's window. It's the effect where the bending of light forms a circular field of about 97 degrees wide giving you a better view of your territory. And guess what? You get to see everything without being seen. Yep, prey barely sees anything except floating sticks that don't look at all like a 1500 pound predator, because the light coming from underwater to the surface bends, and this bending distorts everything beneath it, giving the prey a twisted view of what's in the water. I mean, that refraction works in your favor in both cases. You stay in this position for hours, watching and patiently waiting for any unlucky prey to appear. With this constant vigilance over the years, you've built up a vast archive in your memory about the routines of your prey. You know the saying, history repeats itself? You live it literally. That archive you've gathered helps you predict the behavior and needs of your prey according to the seasons, like the birds you've noticed. Every nesting season, they collect twigs scattered around. That piece of knowledge sparks a brilliant idea. You balance a twig on your snout, return to your usual still position, wait a little, and soon, food comes straight to your mouth without effort. The perfect example of work smart, not hard. 
Some of your kind living in rivers near human villages have watched humans so closely that they've learned their routines. They know exactly where villagers bring their livestock to drink, and even what time they usually arrive. Using this knowledge, they slip quietly to the usual watering spots before anyone shows up and wait, and through their cunning alone, many have gotten the chance to taste human flesh. This has turned you into one of the animals that kill the most humans. And you're also masters at shifting your lungs inside your body on demand. You see, these balloons are basically the steering wheel of your body in water. Wanna dive down? Easy. Scoot your lungs towards your back and you start tilting nose first like a submarine. Slide them sideways and suddenly you're drifting like a shopping cart with a broken wheel. Push them forward and you go up, rising through the water. It's all about lung placement. Wherever you shift your balloons, the rest of your body tilts to the opposite side. That way your body rotates silently without paddling, allowing you to fine-tune your position with precision, while keeping the water perfectly calm as you stalk your prey. And look, those small, beautiful black bumps along your jaw? They give you one of the most powerful abilities in the entire animal kingdom. Inside each bump lies a sensory organ that can detect even the tiniest changes in water pressure, finer than the tiniest ripple from a single drop of sweat. It's like your built-in radar. It allows you to sense movement across a wide area and pinpoint the exact location of prey, even in complete darkness. Let's see if it works. Oh, there it is, a tasty zebra. A little farther away, but that doesn't matter. Using only that tail, broad on the sides and packed with strong muscles, you slam the water backwards and the water responds by generating a counterforce that pushes you forward at 20 miles per hour. You don't stop until you're right in front of the zebra. You open your jaws and lunge, delivering a bite considered the strongest in the world with up to 3,700 pounds of force. That's almost four times stronger than a lion's bite. But this power mainly depends on your size. The bigger you are, the more your muscles scale up and strength grows accordingly. Without your Massive size, you couldn't unleash such a devastating bite and hold your prey with this kind of ease. Still, the real secret lies in your teeth. Their long, conical, razor-sharp shape evenly distributes the crushing force of your bite, keeping them from breaking under extreme pressure. You've got that zebra in your jaws. But now what? Your teeth are just hooks, not knives. They're very good at catching, but very bad at cutting. You can't swallow the whole zebra at once. You're not a snake. You're stuck with food you can't eat. That's a problem. Unless crocodiles already found an ingenious solution 200 million years ago. Yes, they did. And that solution is called the death roll. Or in other words, your brain's only telling you one thing, spin. More precisely, you first fold your legs flat against your body. That's inertia in physics. You shrink your radius by nearly half, and suddenly the same effort makes you whirl several times faster. First rotation, the water churns you as you whip your massive body around, water exploding into white foam as your body becomes a living drill. But it's not enough. The zebra remains stubbornly intact. Second rotation, you pick up speed. Your body thrashes so violently that the water around you turns into a storm. Third rotation, something inside that zebra makes a sound like dropping a watermelon from a rooftop. With each rotation, you're solving the too-big-to-eat problem with pure brute force. Your body generates forces strong enough to tear through muscle and snap bones. The leg separates with a noise that would make a butcher request a career change. The water turns red. Part of the zebra stays locked in your jaws. The rest drifts away in pieces. You've just converted a large mammal into a very disturbing unboxing video. It's not called the death roll for nothing, right? Because crocodiles can't chew, you have no molars to grind meat into smaller pieces. So instead, the death roll replaces chewing entirely. A few death rolls later, what was once a zebra is now perfectly sized for swallowing. When your food's too big to be swallowed, you spin until it's not. Honestly, you chop better than the blender in my kitchen. I wish you were my blender. Oh, look. A few of your teeth popped out during that roll. Luckily for you, you've got a built-in factory. Throughout your life, your teeth are constantly falling out and being replaced with new ones. That means you'll always have sharp, gleaming teeth. My grandmother would be jealous. Alright, now let's take this meal down to the depths where no one can disturb you. And by the way, let me introduce you to an amazing miracle inside your body. Your four-chambered heart. It comes with a rare feature called the foramen of Peniza. This valve allows you to redirect blood flow depending on the situation. It's something almost no other animal can do. When you dive, blood flow to your lungs is reduced since you don't need them underwater, and instead it's rerouted to your brain, heart, and other vital organs, the ones that truly need oxygen right now. 
This lets you stay submerged for very long periods, sometimes more than an hour, plenty of time to finish your feast. Hmm, as tasty as expected. And while you're eating, the same valve directs carbon dioxide-rich blood to your stomach. Why? Because CO2 accelerates the production of stomach acid 10 times faster than in mammals. That means you can digest bones, horns, shells, everything. Nothing goes to waste. And this single meal will fuel you for nearly three months. That means no hunting for a long while. Enough time to finish every Netflix series if you wanted. Your life is basically a holiday with just four working days a year. Now I'm the jealous one, not my grandmother. You see, the energy you've just gained from this feast will be managed wisely. Any other animal your size burns ten times more energy than you do, simply because warm-blooded creatures waste most of it on producing body heat. Poor mammals. But you, a cold-blooded reptile, have a smarter trick. You head to the riverbank and bask in the sun. Your dark skin absorbs all seven colors of the light spectrum, letting you capture solar energy with maximum efficiency. This way, you warm your body without using your own stored energy, saving it for serious moments like fighting another predator or hunting. After a while, you'll start to feel your body heat rising more than it should, and that's when you'll realize you can't sweat. Still, you have clever ways to cool down. Either open your mouth to let the moisture inside evaporate and lower your temperature, or slip back into that refreshing water. It depends on your mood. Most often, you choose the first option, opening your mouth, because you can even take a nap while doing it, and your nap isn't an ordinary nap. You close one eye while keeping the other open, leaving half of your brain awake, alert to any danger, while the other half rests peacefully. Your survival chances, once just 1% in your early years, are now 95%. Thanks to your extraordinary abilities and your enormous size, it's almost impossible to bring you down, and your size gives you another great advantage conserving energy far better than smaller crocs. And that's because body volume grows by the cube while surface area only by the square. So larger animals lose heat much more slowly compared to the tissue they hold inside. And that's why giants like you dominate, capable of surviving for months without food. Unlike the smaller ones who starve quickly because they burn through their energy too fast.